four main types, resin, sintered metal, semi-metallic, and a fancy new space age one, <laughs> ceramic. But does disc brake compound really make any noticeable difference to braking performance on a road bike with a decent hydraulic group set? I didn't really think so, but after all the testing you're about to see, I've definitely got a favorite. My name, as always, is Luke, and welcome back to Trace Velo. Now, mechanical disc brakes is a kind of a, a separate matter, which I'll cover later. But with a decent hydraulic group set, I've always just stuck with the stock brake pads that come with them. They tend to be either a resin compound or semi-metallic. They offer decent braking, so I've never really seen a need to change them. But I'm really intrigued to see if the different compounds actually make a difference. So I'm running the L2 ERX. Uh, electronic group set on my on, on my road bike here and I think these are a semi-metallic variety these brake pads so um, I'm gonna pull over and I think I'll start with the resin compound first okay pulled over to the side of the road to get these fitted and it said it wasn't gonna rain today but the fact it's raining has proved <laughs> that was a lie at least I'm kept warm and dry by this wonderful gilet from today's sponsor <laughs> so, okay uh, link in the description I suppose right anyway I'm on a bit of a hill here so I can bed these pads in properly once I fitted them. This is the bike in question. Many of you are, well, many of you are familiar with it. I'm running the L2 ERX group set here. And as mentioned, these, I believe, are semi-metallic brake pads. But these are the ones that I'll be testing out. And they're in these suspicious looking <laughs> baggies, actually. But these blue ones are the resin pads. So while I get them fitted, I'll tell you a little bit about that specific brake pad compound. So resin, sometimes called organic pads, are usually a mix of Kevlar, rubber, and silica bonded together with resin. And because the materials are so much softer than the steel disc rotors, on paper, they have some great characteristics. The main ones, they bed in quickly, they're easy on rotors, and you have great bite from cold. So the compound doesn't need to heat up in order to provide a decent stopping power. However, the main drawback, resin pads tend to suffer when the heat builds. So under sustained heavy braking, the brakes can fade and the performance can sort of, sort of drop off. Anyway, that's the general sort of <laughs> spiel you normally read. So let's test it and see if that holds up. Now, it might be a little bit overkill, but I've, I've actually got some brake clean here to uh, clean off the disc rotor between pad compounds. Uh, probably not strictly necessary, but I do like to be thorough. So that's what we'll be doing as well. So we're done, those are installed and uh, yeah, the rain has come in a little bit actually. So it's a little bit wet on the ground. So that's uh, an additional facet to the, <laughs> to the testing, I suppose. Anyway, uh, with that done, let's get these bedded in. All right. So after testing just the resin this morning and this afternoon, it's clear this is going to be like a multi-day endeavor. I, I kind of thought naively I might be able to bash this out in a day, but there's no way that I'm going to be able to get to grips with all the brake pad compounds in wet and dry, bed them in properly and all that jazz in just today. So um, yeah, I guess for you, it'll be a quick montage. But for me, I think I'm going to need about a week to try these all out and really get to grips with them. So I spent the rest of the day sort of cruising around, mainly country roads near me, just getting a better feel for the resin pads. A bit of brake squeal to contend with initially. But because they're so soft, I felt like I burnt through this quite quickly. The bike from cold was honestly great, really strong from the moment you pulled the brake lever. And yeah, for general riding out and about, fantastic. Uh, the rain did set in later, which <laughs> was a bit miserable. And again, with the rotors wet, you can hear the squeal while I pull up to this bench. But there was one test missing. Right, I'll tell you one thing. These resin brake pads are so quick to bed in, but I need to test their biggest weakness or supposed biggest weakness, brake fade. So let's hit some hills. Hills, uh, God, yes, yeah, so many near, near me. Hopefully you can see by this vista of Oxfordshire where I live. Whoa, I'm spoilt for choice. No, honestly, it's one big floodplain. So for day two, I had to drive out to Brill in Buckinghamshire, which is one of the biggest hills that's uh, sort of around me. So let's put these resin pads under some torture. <laughs> Felt a bit of brake fade on the way down there. 
those consecutive brake pulls, they kept getting weaker and weaker, so I can definitely feel these fading. Another stretch like that, yeah, would have been, would have been a little bit problematic, I think. So yeah, definitely found the, the limit of these pads. Long sustained braking, not their forte, and yeah, you can hit brake fade if you give it whirly. But with that done, back to the car. Right next up, the complete opposite end of the spectrum, really. Sintered metal. So the Spiel, metallic or sintered metal pads, the hardest compound of the four. They're basically a mixture of powdered metals that have been combined together under high heat and pressure. They're extremely durable and great under extreme braking conditions. Unlike resin, properly bedding in takes time and some heat as well. Brake fade is supposedly much less of an issue with these pads, but on the flip side, the initial bite from cold is supposed to be much weaker. Okay, so I've just got the sintered pads installed. Interestingly, I've never, I've never used this type before. I don't think these uh, disc rotors are ready for fully metallic pads. I'm expecting them to be loud, um, but yeah, I've got a nice big hill down there, so let's give them a rip. So the first hill, nice, long, fast descent. The first few brake pulls were, was so weak compared to the resin, but I expected this. I kept checking behind me to make sure the road was clear, and at the bottom, I really dragged on the brakes to build heat and get them bedded in. Okay, so not crazy impressive. I expected them to heat up and then really bite, but... Let's give them another run, see if they do any better. So yeah, first run, I, I was a bit disappointed. I was giving it welly on the way down, thought I'd given enough to bed the pads in. So heading back up here, same hill again, about 40 miles an hour at peak speeds down this bit, trying to work those pads, building up heat into that compound. And this time at the bottom, the bite from the brakes was monster. Okay, now we're talking. Once they start to bite, they don't let up. Really impressive. And you can hear the disc rotors are pinging. Yeah, they, these things got toasty. Anyway, I took one more run down the hill off camera and set off for a general ride. Right, lunch check, Tesco meal deal. BLT, ready salted crisps, and a juiced monster. The only sensible option, fight me. Oh. Right, back to it. So I spent the rest of the day giving it some welly on these pads. And yeah, the immediate bite from cold, not crazy, but towards the end of each brake pull with the heat building, they, they really dig in. The, the feedback you get and the amount of friction you feel at that point, it, it's crazy. I can definitely understand why, why these pads eat disc rotors for breakfast. Right, today, semi-metallics. Just getting them installed here on the on the side of the road. What's the deal? So sat between resin and sintered, they're supposed to offer sort of, sort of best of both. Basically, a resin and Kevlar compound for the base with additional metal particles like copper, brass, and steel, which hopefully you can see here in, the, in these close-up shots. Allegedly quicker to bed in with decent bite and minimal brake fade. But let's put that to the test. So I've been doing this a couple of days now, just kind of uh, stopping on the side of the road and setting up my little camera and changing out brake pads and stuff. And the amount of cyclists that just um, stop by to say like, oh, like, you're right, is there anything I can do to help? It's just every time. And it's just so, so lovely. Like, I'm always reminded how, like, it's, it's a big community, this cycling thing. So for everyone that did stop me, yeah, thank you. Really, really cool. Anyway, that said, back to testing. So testing these semi-metallics ended up being a multi-day affair. You might have heard in that last clip, almost sounded like I was, uh, I was gonna cry or something. But it's just every time. But, but my voice was just breaking. It was on the way out. And you'll hear in this next clip, it did eventually get the best of me. So out here testing semi-metallics today and my, my voice is definitely going. But if you didn't want to check out any of the stuff that I'm wearing in any of these shots, then check out yeah, today's sponsor, Sirocco. Link in description for 10% off. Anyway, let's crack on. Day five, back in Brill, baby. So let's work those pads and tackle some hills.
okay, so semi-metallics, really impressive on the steep downhills, as, as I knew they would be, really. It takes one or two brake pulls to reach that full brake power. I need to build a bit of heat into the compound to get there. But once you reach it, it just bites and doesn't let up. Minimal brake fade, similar to sintered metal in, in that regard. Hopefully you can see a straw color on the rotors there. So I was really trying to dump some heat into them. But yeah, even so, minimal brake fade with this compound, really impressive. So yes, semi-metallics as advertised, a really good balance between resin and sintered metal, but we still have one left. So back to the wagon and let's test the ceramics. So these are an interesting one. They're a ceramic composite with a supposed catalog of benefits. They're a softer compound akin to the blue resin pads from earlier. So quick to bed in and easy on disc rotors. But despite that supposedly long lasting and stable under very high temperatures, the brake feel is supposed to be smooth and progressive. Plus they're meant to be quieter with some vibration dampening characteristics. Okay, cool. So I've just fitted these ceramic pads onto the bike and I've actually been using these particular ones about a week before I started all this testing. These were the first of the pads that I got in the post and they were really good um, on just sort of general riding, nice and quiet, nice and strong, but I've yet to use them on any sort of steep hills, so that's what I'm here to do. But the last time I used ceramic pads like these on steep hills, I found that they tended to really isolate the heat into the rotors, much more so than any other pads, and the steel of the disc rotors blued really quickly. So um, yeah, I'm interested to see if it follows the same pattern today. So let's figure it out. So yeah, prior to all this testing, I'd already spent a good few days mooching around on these brake pads, and they were great. The progressive brake feel that I mentioned earlier might sound a bit banal, and trite, but it does kind of track with these pads. The brake power seems to follow a very linear curve when applying pressure at the levers. They're very controllable if you catch my drift. And in the dry, they are whisper quiet. I'll give them that for sure. Anyway, just turning up the heat here with some back-to-back -back descending. So how did they do? Okay, so after a couple of pretty savage runs, down this hill behind me on the ceramics. Hopefully you can see, yeah, the rotors are kind of darker and almost, well, they're, they're blue in some areas actually. So they definitely got hot with those, uh, with that brake pan compound. But yeah, overall minimal brake fade and yeah, nice strong braking, even with all that heat. So still very impressive. Okay, so I've, I've literally just finished with the testing over the last week or so. And when you ride these four different types back to back, the differences between them, they are, they are quite striking, much more pronounced than I thought they'd be going into this. But which compound is best for the type of riding which you do? Let's figure it out. If you commute to work or do any riding in like a busy city, then resin brake pads all day long. They offer the best bite from cold. So if you need to emergency stop for some reason, then they've got your back. Plus in the wet, stopping isn't, isn't really an issue. You don't need to build any heat into the compound before you get that initial bite on the brakes. So once the water has been cleared off the disc, you're good to go. Sintered metal. If you mountain bike and do any downhill, this is probably the, the only compound that you'll ever run. But on a road bike, unless you're like smashing hills all day, every day, I don't really think it's necessary in my opinion. That being said, when they bite, they do offer the best braking of all four compounds. It's almost like you can feel them abrading the disc rotors with the amount of friction that they generate. It's, it's quite addictive actually, but it takes a second, maybe two or three to build enough heat to get to that point. They munch through disc rotors and when it's raining, you lose quite a lot of brake feel because it's difficult to build up heat in the compound, in, in, in the wet. And yeah, any, any hint of moisture, they absolutely howl like, like nobody's business. For me, in the style of riding that I tend to do, it's between ceramics and semi-metallics. On ceramics, a lot of the stuff you read online is quite sensationalist, actually. Like, once you go ceramic, you'll never go back. And they are good. A lot of the claims they make do seem to hold up. But for me, semi-metallics just about have the edge. They're a bit better braking in the wet from what I found, but ultimately they deal with like extreme braking and, and high temperatures a bit better than ceramics. My theory on this, and it's based on nothing but, but gut feel, is that semi-metallics are a little bit harsher on the disc rotors. You can feel this as you're braking. With the ceramic pads, it almost feels smooth as you're applying pressure through the levers. Whereas with the semi-metallics, it almost feels gritty in comparison, like you can feel them biting into the rotors a bit more. Ultimately, I think this adds a slightly ablative property to the semi-metallics, which helps carry away some of the heat when you're braking. And I think that's the trade-off, right? Ceramic brake pads last longer and they're very gentle on disc rotors, but as minimal you know, material is getting worn away and degraded, it tends to isolate the heat into the rotor, hence the bluing that I showed you earlier. That's my theory anyway. 
I will say though, if you've not tried the ceramics before, maybe give them a go. They are really good and they might really suit the style of riding which you tend to do. And on that note, the seller that I used for all of the pads in this episode is one on eBay that I've been using for years at this point called Noah and Theo. I think I've mentioned them before. I've, I've tried to like contact them and see if they'll partner with me to do something on the channel, but they've absolutely ghosted me <laughs> multiple times at this point. But they are really good and they're cheap as well. You can get full set for your bike, including postage for about 12 or 13 quid. So I'll put a link in the description in case you uh, wanna check them out. Yeah, I can definitely vouch for the quality. Anyway, um, that's it. So subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode and see you next time. <gasps> It's the bonus clip time. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Mechanical disc brake. Completely forgot to mention that. I, I, I said it at the start of the video and I've left it out. But, but yeah, basically I tried, I tried ceramic brake pads, but they were just so dreadful. I, I don't know what it was about them. They just did not work. Resin pads were okay, but if you're running mechanical calipers, definitely get yourself some semi-metallic brake pads. They, well, I've tried them in all sorts of different calipers over the years and they just consistently work the best. So yeah, mechanical calipers, semi-metallic brake pads, definitely. Also this morning, I got this in the post. It's the updated L2 ERX group set. So Joe showed this off on his channel, was it a week or two back? It looks really, really lovely. So updated design, I love the new color, hopefully that's coming across. It's kind of a silvery blue. It's apparently got better waterproofing, updated front derailleur, which is cool. New buttons and new brake calipers as well. So I'll be getting it installed on a bike pretty soon. I've got two new frames on the way, some other assorted <laughs> AliExpress detritus in front of me to crack on and review. So loads on. And very last thing, I, I met a guy called Tim uh, when I was sat in a coffee shop doing a bit of script writing for an episode. I said I'd put him in a video <laughs> weeks and weeks ago when I met him now, um, but it's completely slipped my mind. So Tim, uh, you're a nice man and it was nice to meet you. So yeah, if, if you do see me out and about, definitely come up and say hi. I'll try and get a, a picture and maybe stick it on the end of a video. Um, and I'll try not to be too awkward, I promise, right? <laughs> anyway, enough of that. See you next time. Ciao.